Background music and ambience brought to you in part by Midnight Syndicate. Music for the imagination and the perfect musical accompaniment for the Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. <laughs> Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. In a world that is not what it seems, and where people are not whom they appear to be. Where puns run rampant through the streets, and it's hard to tell who the real monsters are. Three villains work to tear the world of Euphray asunder and to find new ways to terrorize Tim and Terry. <laughs> Welcome to A Fool's Quest, Villains. Now, let's join the drow rogue Ada, the gladiator bard Francis the Lion, and the rogue warlock Hesh von Eggers as they conspire together to thwart the progress of those gag me fools. Beware, there be villains here. So the villains have met with Duche after they left Duche and Carl and Temple, they adventured on down to Dioteris. Dioteris is a city that is well known to Francis the Lion. He knows that in the city there is a school of Breakwills, which is one of the two most elite schools of magic in all of Euphray. And the headmaster, headmistress, headmistress of uh, the headmistress of <laughs> Breakwills. <laughs> is uh, Katrina the Teenage Sorceress. And uh, she is both the judge and the head mattress. So uh, you guys also met a human along the way in. On your way down you from Talioke to Dioteris, you met a dude that uh, Hesh, right before you met him, had turned into Ingvald with your uh, ability, your appearance changing thing. Where we last stood off, Ada was a little bit injured with 16 points of damage from the explodey slugs that you guys met on your random encounter on the bridge. So you guys know that the very first building when you enter town after talking to that dude, he told you that the very first building when entering town is the inn, and it's got a giant red fence around it. All of the houses in Dio Terrace are super cute and cool looking, even though it's actually on a mountain and it's kind of dreary. And dreary and stuff on the side of the mountain. But the town itself is like this little, little fantasy haven that is there and is awesome. All right. So you guys are heading into Dio Terrace and Hash needs to find a mug for his costume. Outside of that, uh, do you guys, yeah, what, what, what's this look like heading into town? You guys are just now leaving this poor traveler that told you where to go and was very confused by you announcing your Ingvald and meeting Francis and you guys didn't even introduce him to Ada. She just slinked away in the background. So... You're, you're heading into town. Well, I'm going to strut. Is okay. the traveler still standing there awkwardly? If you want him to be, you can see you haven't left yet. So if he is, then Ingvald would give him uh, a nice little boot in the butt <laughs> and be like, Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> hey! You need to leave! <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Yeah. Turn that down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's only when I'm going to be involved is when he's going to yeah. be belligerent. No, nope, that is good. I'm going to make everybody's headphones just a little <laughs> bit quieter. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so you guys go walking by, and just as you, uh, just as he turns around, you give him a quick boot in the butt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> kind of an asshole move, but yeah. villains. All right. <laughs> uh, gag me. <laughs> gag me. Yes. So you guys heading into town then? The rest of the way? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is it busy or 
imagine, if you will, a college town, like a really, really large campus that has all the housing. The college is like built right up and against the mountain, huge building. So, so yes, it's busy, but not busy like a city with a hustle and bustle of a downtown area. More like the kids sitting around reading textbooks or playing hacky sack or okay. smoking the reefer or, you know, wandering about being kids on campus. Where are these kids smoking the reefer at? <laughs> Literally instead, everywhere. Instead of beating them up for their lunch money, she beats them up for the weed. Give me the smoke! <laughs> You've got a pocket full still, and you're just like, meh, I'll take that. I'm confiscating this from you. I can sell it. <laughs> uh, now that I have shown them that I can be Ingvald, I'm going to, as we're walking like in, like in toward the town, before we actually get there, I want to turn uh, myself into a, a more elderly man. Okay. Uh, which is kind of traveling, ragged clothes type of deal, but to look more uh, meek. Okay. So you leave the you drop the Ingvald persona. I, yep, I drop that and I and I dawn on a new. One. Okay. Hmm. I could kind of use that. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Depends on if word is spread of my master. As we're walking into town, I'm gonna give Ada a cure wounds. A cure wounds. Uh, Thanks, because I've been lumping for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this entire well, walk, some would say. That's 13. There we go. All right, so you're only down three hit points now. Yes. We be in. All right. Uh, Francis, will I'm we Francis, be the lion. staying here long in this town? Or do we only plan to be here for a moment? I think we're just passing through, really. Do you have business here? No, I haven't. Oh, I thought you did. Is he a forgetful lion? I thought I thought he would have business with the school or something. No, I was voting that we stay away from the school and not mess with them. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. He's, he said specifically try not to. <laughs> he said don't do anything untoward while we were in town because this is a school full of magicians that are very powerful. Got it. And they probably have pet owl bears and buck bears and umber hulks. Bears. Mm-hmm. Umber Hulk bears. And just regular Hulk bears. Owls. <laughs> Grizzly bears. And oh. Papa bears. and <laughs> Bear owls. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Porridge. Owl bugs. Uh, then I will save my shenanigans for when we get to Hammer Post. <laughs> Could I shenanigans at the town we are staying? <laughs> <laughs> So, so the, 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 the there is like a school. The school is like a really big building on its own. But then the rest is a campus. So there's a tavern. There's an inn. Everything right. else is in here like a town. So you can go. The, but the people populating it are primarily magic users. Well, the people populating the outside of the school are primarily students that aren't going to be as big of a deal for your shenaniganry. Mm-hmm. Going into the school is where you would find most of the magic items, you would find the professors, you would find the, the scary people live <laughs> in the school. Gotcha. The people outside are just like normal college kids. Fucking noobs. Yeah. They're like half pissed already. They're like drunk and high or Got playing, it. you know, the loot outside, Ooh. like trying to... Have a hippie circle. I don't know. What do college kids do these days? Drum circles. I think that's what. Drum that's circles what? And, and ultimate frisbee right. bra. Yeah. Some and bongos. Some natty ice. No. No. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> so you Copyright? could turn back into Ingvald and like crash some frat parties. <laughs> <laughs> that's something you'd do. Right. The whole idea is to make him have a terrible visage. Yeah, I mean, that's that's doable. I, I uh, had planned on creating a crowd in an inn and then likely uh, destroying it, but being him. Oh, I was thinking more embarrassment, but I can get behind her. I, I want them to completely have disdain for him and his whole thing he's got. Destroy the reputation. Yes. Okay. 
him and Gagney. However, I wanted to set it up as ye old man to kind of drum in the people. And I'm sure that you, hey, uh, you could uh, slip your hand into a few pockets if you wanted to. Sounds amazing. I'm Trust sure up a crowd. What you'd like to do, Francis? Well, I can draw a crowd. Hmm. It's fair. Yes. Now, my initial thought, and I'm taking suggestions. I'm just going to light up a big old freaking Carl <laughs> Cush blunt right here and just get down. <laughs> Whatever Carl you want to do, go for it. <laughs> Carl Cush. Is uh, to get them in there, have them distracted quite a bit, uh, seal off the entrances, and exits, be him, and maybe start a fire. Who knows? But if you're going to draw the crowd, I may not have to be old man geezer. So, real quick, <laughs> just interject as your GM. You transformed from Ingvald into a, an old man mm -hmm. and then took Francis to the side to have this no, conversation. I think, I think we're all just kind of, like, I thought we were all just in fairly close proximity, all three of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I assume, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all three of you together. I mean, yeah. you're not, like, walking down the boulevard shouting no. this plan no. out though right no, no. no we're milling about yes we like it would be in hush hush zones in like an alley or, or like even before you can be actually. hush hush all you want we're gonna yeah. smoke <laughs> <laughs> just just making sure i had a good discreet picture. yes discreet you might want to hurry up yes. with your plan because the kush is drawing the crowd <laughs> <laughs> but i i don't this so that you know, I could draw the crowd, but if you want to draw the crowd, I could just be that horrid IPA. Deal. And I mask of many faces back into. Ingvald! Actually, in in character, what ha, have I heard of Ingvald before? Or do yeah, I know so, much so we about all have where heard, he's from? We say. all have heard rumors and stuff because that's how the. Podcast yeah, so the way the podcast is going to work is as episodes of season three air, you guys go into towns and you go into cities or you talk to different people. Just in your travels, you hear rumors. And the rumors that you hear are the episodes that have aired beforehand. So you guys, from what you've heard, we've had two episodes at this point drop for the heroes. And you've heard that they are in Cheddar right now, and uh, rumor says that they were potentially teaming up with some people to hunt down Temple or Temple's uh, boyfriend, Chyla Tuff. So, so that's what you know. <laughs> okay. But again, those are rumors. So you do have a general idea of what Ingvald kind of looks like, but again, all all from rumors. You know, you're not seeing like photos of him he's not on the internet and uh <laughs> what's the internet exactly and, and yeah so you know actually ingvald works at a tavern now called the uh half shell pirate brewing that's what Good you job. know yep and he distributes booze and he's been distributing alcohol for the last uh three months to different parts of euphray on the uh there western side yep while you guys are trying to figure that out, I'm just going to talk up this group of kids right there. <laughs> Go play uh, hacky sack. Dude, yeah. Yeah, oh my absolutely. god. Hell yeah. What's up, guys? You're so dexterous. All right, we're going to need the first roll of the evening. Uh, it needs to be a dexterity check for some <laughs> hacky sack skills. So roll a d20 and add your dexterity. Well, that ain't oh. great. So eight. <laughs> eight? All right. So they play. They're nice, though. You seem like a cool, hip, older Passing lady. <laughs> I pass around the kush. <laughs> yeah, that that immediately boosts your roll with them. <laughs> so it's like they passed you while you were passing, and it just hit. How much you did them. Carl give me? Cause I'm looking for to make some scratch here. Um, I would say eight ounces. Nice. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> I'm pass out a couple of joints here and there. Like, hey, yeah. there you go. You guys want some of this? Um, make a little scratch. So there is an inn out here. Mm -hmm. Right. You passed it on your way into the town. It's got a red fence. Was it a large inn? Did it have a big party-friendly common room? It does. It did. Okay. I'm going to find just the most crowded area in the street. Most people around talking, walking, eating, whatever they're doing. Okay. And I'm going to just ridiculously, you know, circus barkery, shout out this limerick that I just wrote. <laughs> 
proceed. <laughs> there once was a dwarf from the coast whose blood alcohol content was the most. He's brewed up a keg. You won't have to beg. He's delighted to be your host. Party tonight at the Red Fence. Everybody come. Free beer. <laughs> All right. Make a, uh, make a performance roll with advantage. Did it beat a 15? Yes. All right. So you draw the whatever number of people you are looking to, to do. Um, enough to fill that common room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then I'm going to go back. Hey, stop bullying that. Pass it, pass it, pass it, pass it. <laughs> <laughs> We need to find a big keg. <laughs> <laughs> we did not think this through. <laughs> we did not. I was just going to go in and order some of their swill and hey, insult how's class? them. It's going good? Yeah. Then walk around like I own the place, lock the doors, burn that motherfucker down, Pookie. Oh, I... I guess I really doubled down, didn't I? <laughs> it's not just the regulars in there tonight. <laughs> and, and just so you guys know, I know it's been like a month since we played. Uh, just so you guys know, you also thought that maybe he was, maybe Ingvald was distributing here already. You were going to check the bar for that. Oh. Oh. Well. This was conversation from. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. From, from before. <laughs> so. You, you knew he had a big distribution center, and you thought it might range here, but you were going to go investigate That's that? That's right. It might, yeah. And you didn't know for sure. Didn't, so all we've got to do is strike a deal with the bartender to, I mean, he's going to be dead in the morning anyway. <laughs> yup. We can offer to pay him double for the keg. You guys are my best friends. For any, <laughs> any kegs he uses at the party tonight. But we don't know how many people are coming, so we can't say how many kegs we need to purchase. Thumbs up. Hmm? All right. <laughs> While you guys are hollering at each other, I'm still over here with this group. I have no idea what you guys are doing. Hey, uh, Ada, why don't you bring your, uh, friends? Hey, fuck off. I'm having fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a point. Uh, Actually, what? Ada's drumming up that circle that, that she's got. It's got about 20 kids there that yeah, she's... That's why I tried to, like, get her to come with, but she's apparently fucking off. So I'm going to let her fuck off because I know better. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are my new best friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh Till tomorrow morning. But yeah, as, <laughs> We're as, not burning these ones. <laughs> I don't have that many notes. Uh, do you see me? Uh, let's see. Right, so I walk in. Uh, I tell them we're going to pay double. We're going to need as many kegs as they have. Hey, do you know yes? those two fuckers? As many there? kegs as, no? No idea. as they need. But we'll pay for all of it. But we'll pay double in the morning because we don't know how much they'll drink. Right. Great. Uh, and then when you see me going to the back... To close off any of the other exits, you close off the front one? I'll think of something. All right. Because I was also going to cast darkness so that they can't actually see the fire until it's too late. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Let's hope they all have a bad cold and can't smell If you want me to smoke. You can smell the smoke. It's going to be too... Hey, you're playing hacky sack. Get out of here. <laughs> Go on, now get... Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you in the head. <laughs> uh... uh yeah, I can, Knock unless you want to get the back door, and then I'll lock the front door, cast uh, darkness, set a fire, and then uh, uh, meet you in the back. And then we both exit and lock it, and whoever survives, survives. Okay. All right, sounds great. Uh, I need to go to a shop and get some alchemist fire. <laughs> We're not prepared at all. <laughs> all right. Hey, you kids, where's the, where's the closest shop? Uh, the kid. So the kids playing hacky sack. One of the kids uh, kicks the the sack over into the group, and then he looks away and looks at you, and he points, and he's like, "Hey, Mister, it's up there." And he points to the uh, the actual academy. Gnarly dork. <laughs> Bye. Hey, be nice, my friends. <laughs> Whatever. I'm oh. evil. <laughs> Pour up uh, beer. <laughs> Less confidently. Do you, so one of the people says, or one of the kids says, "Wait, did you say your name's Ingvald Porter Altbeer?" Giant dork. Hey, you're the guy who makes that uh, brew down at the uh, at the uh, Moss and Malts. Yeah, what of it? That's great, dude. It's my favorite drink. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you're oh. fucking dork, and I'm out of here. This way. Maybe, maybe, kid, you didn't hear the announcement I just made. But there is free that beer tonight <laughs> down at that place. It's all free. It's all 
free. Ingalls really? here in town. Like, he brought several kegs with him of that beer. I'm yelling this as I'm walking away. And it's Just, free. Tell your friends. It's a huge party. Oh, okay. Huge! Is it like a, th- a theme or just drinking? Yep. Just that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just that. <laughs> All right. Is that not enough? <laughs> Does that not entertain you? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> Does booze not do it for you, weirdo? Okay. All right. All right. So you guys are so you guys are walking away. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the shop. Yeah. All right. So you're heading towards the school. Okay. Uh. Okay, listen, no chicanery up here. I think right. maybe even drop the disguise. Mm. Mm, you're buying alchemist's fire. That's suspicious. Yeah, keep the disguise. I think I'm going to wait outside. <laughs> I don't want to be seen with as an accomplice by anyone who might not. Why don't you just go wait by the inn? That'll work. Yeah, I'll meet you there. Make sure people keep coming in. Ada, you see the guy that was just telling... Hesh slash Ingvald, where to go to get Alchemist Fire, you see him walk over to another group and start inviting them to the shenanigans tonight. And in that group, there is a young drow lady that you um, you don't recognize her, but also she's the only drow that you can see, and you don't really see drow out, especially in the day, in the sunlight and, and stuff. So it definitely stands out to you that this person is, and she's like maybe 150 feet away so you know a good a good well away from you but yeah no you you definitely notice that she's in that ring of people that just got invited to the tavern all right so i still have a pretty big group of kids around around you yes yep so i guess i would ask like does anybody know who that is one of the guy well they all stop and kind of look over there's a big group of people and he's like oh uh which one are you pointing at the only one that looks like me. Oh, uh, yeah. That's Ivana. <laughs> What's her story? Uh, I don't know. She's a, she's a magician here to study with the rest of us. It's kind of kind of crazy, but apparently she comes from a really rich family of drow, and they've, they're they pretty, you know, their family has been raised landside, not, not in the uh, underground reaches of Euphray. They are... They're, Land dwellers? I don't know. Land, land ho. Overbrights. Yeah. They're earthbound. Uh, whatever. They, they're sunshine state. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're upside drow. Uptown girls. Yikes. There you go. <laughs> you there did you it. Upside drow. There I'm proud of you. Goes. My next character. Alright. I don't. Ada herself doesn't really know much about the drow. Nope. Just because... You were nabbed at a young age, yep. sold to slavery, came up landside. Alright. You're an upside drow as well. So knowing that my capadres are up to some shit... Yeah. Would you heard the game plan before you stole away to go smoke a fatty and play a hacky yeah. sack? Yeah, I would definitely want to talk to her, pull her away from everything. Try to get some information. So nobody knows who she is other than her name? Just, yeah, her name's Ivana. She comes from a rich family, and she is a drow that is uh, on the upside. So, let's see. Here, take that. (laughs) Anybody want any more? Nope. Fucking lightweights. All right. Ivana! So Ivana (laughs) peeks up from the other side of the yard, and uh, I like said she's like 150 feet, but she hears her name. She, She... she peeks over and she's like looking around and uh, she sees you looking at her and she makes eye contact. Get over here! So she starts making her way to you and we'll cut back over to Hesh and... Well, actually, let's cut to Francis. So Francis, you're following Hesh as he's making his way to the academy. When yeah. do you when do you cut off and when you cut off, what do you do? Um, Right after we finish our conversation there and then I'm going to head back and... First, I'm going to look around the inn, and then I'm going to look for somewhere that I can maybe procure some horses so we can get away quickly. Okay. But I want to look around the back of the inn to see how I might barricade things. Are you going into the inn as well, or just scouting around the outside? Just scouting around the outside. Give me an investigation roll. It's not good. Um, 
five. So you you see a door, and the door on this side has a handle, and you go to open it to go in, and the door opens and it pops open. But on the other side, it's got one of those security bar push bar things, so you can't really lock it from either side. So you can't really figure out a way to block. You don't see anything back there to block it. Does it open in or out? It opens out. Mm. So you could, in theory, put something at the door to block it and keep it closed, but there's nothing around you in your vicinity to be able to block that right now. You couldn't just, like, scoot a barrel over in front of the door or anything. There's just nothing around it that that's that big that would stop it from opening. Gotcha. And it's got the, like, the fire exit bar. <laughs> yep, fire exit bar, yes. Yep. Just the convenient dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> just the inconvenient ones. I'm sure I'll there's a cart out. somewhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll mull this over while I look for horses. Okay. Four white ones. <laughs> <laughs> Four white so ones. Horses. So you make your way from the Moths and Malts, which is the name of the, the tavern and inn, you make your way from there just a few doors down to a place that sells pack mules because you are actually on a mountain. So there's not a lot of big, wild, free-range horses, but they do have pack mules for sale that you can purchase should you want. Do they have a cart? Yeah, yeah, they have a cart. How much is the cart and a mule? A mule is 25 gold. The cart is 50. I'll think it over. Okay. And they've just got their price tags on the window, you know, like scrawled out in chalk so they can erase it and put it back up. So, all right. So you are looking at the prices and we'll cut back over to Hash slash Ingvald, who is now making his way to the academy. But stops. But stops. Because he realizes that he has a flask of oil in his inventory and goes, oh, and then turns back around. Because that'll do. <laughs> All right, so so you walk right up to the gate, and the guy that's standing in front of the gate goes to act like he's going to ask you why you're why you're there, and instead you stop and turn on your heel. No, I like I pull the flask out of my my uh, pack. Go. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and then just go. <laughs> the guy takes the step back. You uh, turn around, and, yeah. and yeah, he does not engage. Now I'm scuttling. I'm scuttling as quick as I've ever scuttled in my life as a dwarf. <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> Two. Um, it, the tavern inn is two-story, correct, or one? It is two-story. Two-story. All right. So now I'm going to make my way into it, try and burst the doors open. At the at the malls and malts? Yep. Malls and malts. Malls. Moths and malts. I keep thinking you say malls. I know. That's, and yeah, that's why I'm like moths, like the bugs that Moss. go and get onto lights, because Moss. that's the uh, campus. There, that's the school's mascot. mascot awesome. There's a bunch of moths. It's and, actually the moth man. Yeah, and then <laughs> Ooh. and then malts for for the beer. Obviously. Predicting this very disaster. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to tell you. <laughs> then you put up that zapper and he died. So great. So moths and malts. Great. You you walk in. To it, <clears throat> I burst through the door. Okay, cool. Um, so you burst through the doors. There is a gentleman sitting at the door, and he's got a uh, a little light wand on his hand, uh, or in his hand, and he says, "Oh, can gonna need to see your ID, sir." Ooh, ouch! I. It's a college bar. Yeah. Do I? Do we have actual ID? Any of us? I would say Ada does not specifically i would say francis does specifically because he was at the bardic college right. i would say you're a toss-up whether you want one or not you could say you you had one i'd say ada has a fake one for ima but not a real one for, for ada if i mean i uh hesh came from a, a fairly prestigious you would have lineage one. and i'm good with forgeries and such so like I, I would imagine i would have one okay then cool so, you got okay. one yeah um so yeah just flash it and then, like, as, I'm pull, as I pull it out, I'm looking at it, and then I, I set it on, and I go, uh, You know me, I'm involved. I'm here all the time. I'm, I distribute the stuff here. What do you want? You say you're here all the time? Uh, I said that in passing very quickly, and there's no <laughs> taking it back. All right, well, I'm going to need... 
Actually, I'm going to need two things. <laughs> I'm going to need first a sleight of hand so that you lift the ID real quick to see if you keep it covered up. And we're going to want a DC 13 on that. So 21. Okay, so sleight of hand. So he sees it goes up and he sees it go back down and he doesn't challenge it. But now I need a deception roll because you said you're here all the time. Uh, so that's 27. Okay, so 27. So he doesn't remember ever seeing you, but he feels like, okay, all right, I agree with that. And now I need a perception roll. 16. All right, so you you <laughs> you walk in, and it is a college bar setup. So you've got darts on one side. You've got some kids studying on another side with some drinks in front of them. You've got a small bar, like, right up at the, against the back wall. And the small bar has only three taps back there. But one is the, the tap handle has a... Mm, you didn't know this before. Francis knew this. So you roll a history check to see if you recognize it. Nat 20. Dun, 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 roll again. Nat 11. That's not, that's not cool. That's <laughs> no, okay, so so you recognize it. It is the, it's a turtle shell, a little mini turtle mm. shell that's on the handle. So you recognize it. Blue. Yep, and then uh, um, it's it's got a peg leg coming out of the side of it. So it's awesome. the, the, uh, Half shell turtle pirate brewing company. <laughs> Whatever the fuck I'm it's called. It. Alright, so you recognize right brewing. away. Yes, thank you. You recognize right away that that is probably the drink that Inkball distributes to here. Um, oh, what's gonna be great is if we fuck up which one that actually is. Because <laughs> you brought several kegs, apparently. <laughs> but they're not on me. So. Yeah. Uh, so I walk in and I beeline it for the bartender. Okay, so there is a bartender that is cleaning some stuff, and he stands up from cleaning whatever he was doing on the lower shelf, and stands up with a mug, a couple mugs, and sets them on the counter. And it is this super fat elf just chilling behind the the tavern, and he's like, "Hello there." <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm a little raspy. What can I help you with? Listen, got a huge party going on. Invited them all here. I want everyone to drink for free. We'll buy, pick up the tab tomorrow, and even pay double as long as everyone drinks for free. And who are you? I'm in Paul Portal. Oh, here. that, and I'm gonna point at the turtle and be like, "That's that's for me." Did you say portal all beer? I said portal. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> it's funnier if you said portal. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. Plot so two. <laughs> Plot two. Nick nickel. So uh, so I'm not gonna make you roll again because I just okay. made you do three rolls back to back to back <laughs> for deception. We'll we'll roll with you. What would you get? Twenty one deception or whatever. So twenty seven. Twenty seven. So, so yeah. So about. so he um, he believes he's a oh evil. We love your wares. Great. And he, like, his belly shakes a little bit like he's chuckling, but you don't actually hear a chuckle. It's just this giant fat <laughs> elf belly emanates. shake. Yes. There's a jiggle. And then he bends down, and you see the, you know, he bends down and reaches for something behind him, yeah, and does. you see a giant elven ass crack. Yeah, you know, yeah. just. Does he, does he have a tiny little head, though? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Like yes. six necks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with slim, pointy ears. Looks like, like a Dick Tracy villain. <laughs> Baby face. Yep, yep. So he reaches back up and puts two more cups on the thing, and then he puts a name tag on that says Champ. Awesome. <laughs> and then I want uh, a mug of mine. Okay. And he reaches he reaches for one of the mugs that he just sat on the counter, and he starts pouring um, the drink for you, and he says... We're still selling your mothballs brew. <laughs> and it is, uh, it's an elvish dark ale. I mean, it's a, it's meant for, uh, for him. And, uh, do you, do you drink it? No. Okay. All right. Nope. I just have it. And then I'm going to climb up onto the bar and I'm going to address the people at the bar. All right. So you climb up and you knock the mugs over that he just set up. <laughs> the, the three remaining. Can, uh, wait, are there, are there, 
Are there is there a space where there I could not do that? No, it's a small bar. Okay. It's essentially the students walk up, get their drinks, and then go to other places in, in the bar. So you right. climb up. No, on, I climb up on there. Okay. and I do kick. And yeah, so they, like a couple of them are still in my way. So oh, just like I'm another. Okay, <laughs> we're doing <laughs> this now. <laughs> I love this guy. I'm gonna be sad if he burns alive. He's um, gonna burn alive. He's, he's not gonna escape. escape. He's not out the window. <laughs> yeah, he can barely get out from behind the bar. <laughs> And I'm going to address them and be like, Hey, fuckos! Free drinks! Tell your friends! Bring them all in! Here we go! Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to hop down. Guess it's settled then. We're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to um, give him a good old thumbs up uh, and then scuttle some more towards the back of the inn to in tavern to see where the doors and such are. I'm okay. just picturing like the Zoid bird. <laughs> Only instead of that noise, it's a Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he hollers over to the door and he's like, Chip, go ahead and get your friend Dale to help with the door tonight. We'll be busy. Stand champ. Take your shirts off. <laughs> Doing Wear the dance. nice bow ties. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be busy. <laughs> All right. Did you want to cut or you want to keep going? Um, no, we'll we'll go ahead and cut over. Okay. So, so uh, Ada, you are standing there. The group that was around you kind of skedaddled. They were all super high from the lovely <laughs> did weed I sell that you're. Uh, yes, you did sell some. You sold off three ounces and got ten gold per ounce. Nice. Sick. Ten gold, little man. Put that money in, in my money. hand. If that yes. money does. Owe me, owe me. Oh, copyright. <laughs> uh, no, we changed the lyrics. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, she makes her way across the thing. The group separates, and she's like, "Um, do I know you?" No, and I'm sorry I yelled your name like that. But I've never seen anybody that looks like me. So sorry for that outburst. Oh, n- no problem. I, I. No, we're kind of few and far between, so where are you from? So, how have you been? <laughs> um, okay, are you studying here? Are you a new student here? Just kind of passing through, checking out my options. Thinking oh. about going to school myself. Very good. I like it. What are you studying? Nature. <laughs> <laughs> That's doable, yes. Growing things. <laughs> so you're going to be an accountant. <laughs> She says, oh, yeah, no, that's that's super cool. I'm more of the arcane arts myself with, uh, yeah, some of the little trick stuff. And she does a little dancing light spell from her hands to kind of show off, you know, what she's been working on. She's like, so how long are you going to be around then? What was your name? Presley? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. do I use the inflection like that, Presley? Absolutely, well, definitely. Very good. Don't want to be offensive. I still keep, you know, keep my hair in my face so that way okay. no one can see the tattoo I've got. You got your contacts in, essentially? Or no, just, just the, hair. the hair down in yeah. front of your yeah. eye? Yeah, okay. Just leave the hair down. The email haircut? Yes. Okay. It's not a phase, <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> You set me. Jeez. Sorry, go ahead. It sounds better on vinyl. God. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I... I don't know how long I'll be here. Like I said, I'm just checking out the options. Just trying to get my feet wet. Trying to know what there is out there. Very Nature's cool. my thing, so I heard this place was good for that. Maybe yeah. I was wrong. Cool. Well, um, if you're going to be in town later tonight, I guess there's a get-together over at Moths and Moths. No! (laughs) No. uh, No. No, I'm not into that. (laughs) Oh. oh. You should probably stick to studying. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, I guess. It was very nice to meet you, Ivan. Well, very, very nice to meet you too, Presley. Here's a nice joint. Enjoy that. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> she takes the joint and starts to leave. Skips away. Are there mean joints? No. no. Just nice ones? No. <laughs> I've slipped a I sorry, I'm, I'm sorry note in her pocket. <laughs> she yeah. walked away, obviously. It's going to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> Total Very destruction. Interesting. 
Is there anybody else around me, or was it just her? Did everybody else just kind of skedaddle? There, I mean, they're still just kind of like in the outside. There's some throwing a frisbee. There's another hey, like wasn't petting there a dog. Jeffrey, here? Jeffrey. hey, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so back over to Francis the Lion. You are checking out the prices in the window for a mule and a cart. Yeah, but I think I need to have Ingvald buy it, so I'm going to go find him. You, you Okay, so th- this kind of lines up. So right as you finish checking the prices, you see Ingvald-ish uh, come storming out the door in a big flamboyant huff of a puff. And he comes out of the malt and malts, or malls and malts, malls and malts, malls and malts yeah. uh, tavern. There's a mall. Yes. Yeah. Just as just as he's leaving, there is a really buff-looking shirtless dude with a bow tie on that comes walking in. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Does that do it for you? <laughs> Not quite it, but it does something. <laughs> Something's happening. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna flag him down, and uh, you know, jog on over. Catch I I've carried the mug with me. I haven't let that go. Okay. Because it, it it completes the ensemble. Yeah. Do you still have alcohol in it? Or sure. Okay. Well, I I didn't it. drink it. Right. And yeah. I, like I let it slosh around and spill. Okay. Like when I'm being. I just know. didn't know if like you dumped it out, so no. you're just carrying an empty no. mug. Okay. Nope. Okay. Very cool. Uh, I want to be belligerent and obnoxious. You're nailing it. I'm doing great. <laughs> Um, so after I had, uh, stood up and did a whole deal and got down and went towards back and stuff, um, was I able to like kind of check on how many exits and stuff were actually in the, in the, in oh no, I'm sorry. There's, so. there's the stairs that go up to the second floor and that is a stairwell that's off shortly behind the, the bar area. Um, so it kind of wraps around, you see the front door, but the kitchen blocks off the entry to the back door. So, so okay. if you had, so before leaving, if you wanted to go back there, you could, but there was a bunch of, there was employees. I just want to make notes of, of entry points and stuff before I left. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Then we're on the same page. I kind of assumed that was the thing. I just yeah. forgot to tell yeah. you what it was. Appreciate yeah. The, it. the kitchen breaks off from the back door. So, okay. um, where, where, uh, Francis went to probably was a direct doorway into the kitchen from the layout. All right, so... What is it? So there's... I'm going to keep my voice down, you know, and look furtive. I'm going to have the shifty eyes. I'm um, going to awaken mind you and say, don't worry, we can just talk this way, which is essentially telepathy, back and forth. Oh, well, that's convenient. It is. Um, I'm going to telepathically um, explain that there's... <laughs> yeah. I couldn't find a way to barricade the back door without, you know nailing it shut and I'm pretty sure that would draw notice but there's a cart there's a there's a shop right over there that'll sell us a donkey and a cart that we could just park in front of that exit when it's time yeah that sounds phenomenal I think Ingvald should purchase it wink (laughs) (laughs) but it thinks it and says it and winks yes (laughs) yes that part's out loud it's a trifecta so you guys are on like a college campus yard with all this stuff going around you, staring deeply into each <laughs> yeah. other's eyes like Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Right. And then all of a sudden, Francis just blurts out, wink. wink. <laughs> and, and yes. Winks. Okay, cool. In my mind, I will say, uh, yeah, I'll go get that post haste and actually uh, set that up now. Do you want to uh, me to bring the mule around? Yeah, bring it around. Bring it on around. Uh, just. And then like, just around the, the corner, wagon, don't, uh, leave it in there, and then and then, yeah, hitch I'll up the meal somewhere. Hitch up the meal somewhere, and I'll, 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 I should be able to move a wagon, I would think. All right. I mean, I could just take the meal and wagon to the back there, and then unhitch it and take the meal and hitch it somewhere else. So, like, make it do all the work. So, yeah. All right. That's what I'll do. Uh, and so, without saying anything out loud, I scuttle. <laughs> I scuttle. That's the noise you make when you scuttle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Any anything else you guys need to do for prep? I'm gonna let everything roll out pretty much the way you. There are stairs. There's also a kitchen in the back, and there's a front door being guarded by two large men. Now, to get the appropriate amount of, of I guess, collateral damage, I would need to make sure that we cut off the stairs. We're cutting off the back and cut off the, the front door. I could do the front door because that's going to be what's on fire to begin with. 
Can you make the fire be on the stairs? Yes. How's the front door open? Does that open in or out? It opens in. I have an immovable rod, but I don't want to lose that just for this. I'm just going to look field. across the street or around the joint. Is there any kind of like lamp posts or anything like that? There are lamp posts on the on the front of the buildings, but nothing behind the buildings. Anything, a uh, tree or anything that the front of the inn faces that I could maybe tie a rope to securely? Yeah, the lamp post in the street. You could tie it to the lamp post. We can just tie the door shut. But you got two burly men guarding it. Are, the men you? are inside. Oh, they're inside. Yep, you walked inside. Then they I thought tried they to outside. ID you. I, mm-hmm. Okay, sweet. Okay. Yeah, let's do that then. I don't know why you're making this so difficult. Light the fire on the stairs. Yeah. Come out. Right. <clears throat> I'll push the wagon up to the door, the, the, the back door. Then I'll run around to the front. Tie the la- rope to the lamp post, and I'll have it ready. When you come out, I'll tie it to the door handle. There are windows on the top floor, on the second floor. Uh, there are windows, but they're like hotel windows. Mm. So, so they're like the stairs on fire. They're not going up the stairs. Right. I was saying about my escape. Oh, you could light the stairs on fire, and from the top. I can then... move the wagon in front of the door after I escape out the back. Perfect. We got it. We did it. We're we here. did it. Okay. We've, we've done it. I'm going to go buy a wagon and All a right. mule. All right. So as you guys Ingvold. go to, to buy the wagon as Ingvold. And we will cut back over to Ada. So, Ada, you watch Ivana walk away through the crowd uh, back toward the uh, – back to her dorm, essentially. She's heading towards a house. It says – Delta, Iota, Kappa. You mean, we didn't have to, uh... But aren't you glad we did? Perfect. All right. Well, I'd holler out to her. Ivana, hold up, hold up, hold up. She stops and she's like, oh, hey, what's, what's, uh, what else? You seem to be the most uh, fascinating person that I've met since I've stepped into town here. I've been traveling for a minute. I need a shower. Is any way I can go back and grab a shower real quick and... Yeah, she, Pick your brain about the drow. She looks you up and down. She's like, I, you know what? That's a, I, I would want to sh- travel to, or I would want to shower too after traveling. So yeah, I might even have a change of clothes for you if you're interested. You want to come this way? We look about the same size. <laughs> that would be perfect. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's uh thank you. And she holds the weed up again. <laughs> like, cool. Enjoy that. Yeah. It'll fuck you up though. Sorry so, in advance. So she takes you back to uh, Delta Iota Kappa and <laughs> says... <laughs> Uh, says it's a it's a communal shower, but it's an all girls uh, house. So you know, feel free to make yourself at home. And she points you to uh, the shower. She's like, "Here's where the showers are, and then here's actually where my room is. If you want to follow me real quick, I'll get you that outfit I was talking about." Perfect. That sounds great. Uh, and if you uh, like certain smells with your shower, I know a great place to get this banana soap that'll blow your mind. <laughs> I've never had banana soap, but that sounds fabulous. I do love bananas. Awesome. Maybe I'll break you off a little piece. Yeah. All right. Bananas <clears throat> are actually the fruit of Delta Iota Kappa. So. You guys have a fruit? That's yeah, so weird. It's a house fruit. It's a big thing around. That's perfect. You're a pro. A pro. Hey, look at me. Pro. Well. Do you do? We'll we'll fast forward through through the buying the cart and right. the mule, uh, or did you guys get the mule too? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So so we'll fast forward through that. <laughs> so do you, I assume uh, you're going I, in. I, I, I'll give you the gold for it too. I got it. I have well, I already gold. took it out. Oh, okay. Hash, go ahead and subtract thirty-seven gold from your inventory, anyway. Okay. Cool. <laughs> What the fuck? For all you listeners, we're all just staring at each other with raised eyebrows. <laughs> Wondering why this money has gone missing. <laughs> Where does money go? He got okay. a hole in his pocket? He may have a hole in his pocket. Do you need a darn that pocket? A dar? Darn. A darn that pocket? Watch your mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> Delta Iota Kappa. Okay, so so do you guys do anything to this poor guy? Or I assume you go in, you pay for the stuff, and you yeah, make a ruckus, is, like obnoxious Ingvald yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Ingvald's going to insult the man after buying the stuff, insult him, insult the stall, and then leave and be like, you're missing out on the party, bitch. And, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Like, he's just going to be obnoxious. Cool. All right. So you succeed. Awesome. <laughs> Wholeheartedly. And then and then brings it to the rear of uh, of the inn. Okay. Right next to the door, but not uh, in the way yet. Okay. An empty cart? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, like, perpendicular to it, though. Yep. Um, unhitch the mule. I'm going to take the mule... Um, uh, you know, like two two doors down, not three doors, just two doors down, right. <laughs> and see about finding a hitch. Um, okay. And then I'm going to walk in through the front door. Um, and if I see Francis of Moths and Malts. Yep. Okay. If I see Francis, give him the finger <laughs> and a <laughs> wink, and then yell at the top of Ingvald's voice wink so francis did you go back into moths and malts already no i've not gone in i'm uh i'm gonna hang out outside you know on a grassy knoll somewhere careful dropping that name. <laughs> reciting poetry or whatever <laughs> reciting poetry until until it starts getting pretty crowded in there okay and so you then, uh, you actually find a kid who's sitting there um trying to talk poetry to another kid they're they're like you know he's trying to impress um, this this boy that he's trying to flirt with, and you walk right up, and he's doing a really shitty job. That's garbage you're reciting. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to a real poem by a real poet. I just wrote it. <laughs> Contemplate arson. Block the exits. Immolate. Then we run away. <laughs> It's called a haiku. Maybe you haven't <laughs> studied that far yet. Uh, <laughs> you, you can do better. <laughs> Be the, uh, the, you know, one guy that was flirting gets in a huff and leaves, and the other guy's like, oh, thank you. That guy was so annoying. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's your time on the grass, you know. Uh, <laughs> you can do better, but you should have known better. <laughs> Ada, it's starting to fill up in malls and malts. Uh, what are you doing in Delta Iota Kappa? Showering. Shower. I mean, yeah, once, you, once you're done showering. <laughs> so you're done with that. That that t- time progressing. <laughs> progressing. So. Because you have to have fucking six showers, apparently. <laughs> Everywhere you go, it's shower time. <laughs> Sometimes I like to take a bath, so. <laughs> Mix it up. I'm going to talk to her, um, you know, get comfy in her new clothes, persuade her out of some boots, maybe. Mine are a little worn. I want to talk to her about her family and then, um, like, what is the drought? Like, I have no clue what I am. I just know what I was. Yeah, so so she tells you a little bit about it. She she doesn't go too much into her family because she's kind of annoyed with them right now. She's at school. They didn't want her to go to the school. They wanted her to live on some estate and marry some other rich, you know, high elf. And she didn't really want that, so she's pursuing her own. She didn't really want to tell you about her family, but she drones on about them for like 30 minutes. Then finally she starts telling you about the drow, that typically they are, you know, really kind of a violent war race that lives under in you know underground and uh they live uh like in the deep deep depths of euphra and a lot of times they are known for being vicious warriors that can take and conquer areas when they so choose um there's a lot of myths and stuff about them but they're not really as aggressive as the myths come out to be and uh, a lot of people think that they don't really exist until they've seen one and so the the her family is kind of one of the more prominent families in Euphra right now, even though there are several other families that are out there that have come to the Upside Drow. And they, uh, and, yeah, and, and that's it. So she has heard of people going down to the Underdark to try and capture and slave or whatnot. But most of the time, if they do, uh, the Drow... The you know the more warrior based drow society will typically kill them and take no hostages and and yeah yep or enslave them so that's kind of what she told you 
as far as like the facts that she knows, but she grew up in high society and she's a bougie. She tell me any of the names of her family? Got family. Stan, Dick, Chuck, Neva, Hertzta, <laughs> Ink, Trina, and Vina. Those are my extended family. You guys are rich? Yeah. They're, from- so, do you acquire money on your own, or are you just living off your family's money? Um, as of right now, I have an estate, which is an orange farm, and that is what I inherited. <laughs> and they sell these oranges, and that's where I make my, my profits from. So, you, the family money runs deep, though? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> runs very deep. You have a very nice room. Thank you. Love your clothes. They're very comfy. Oh, yeah. Very, where can I get some of these? Well, actually, so I got that. That's actually out of the uh, Varsity Hall. It's a sweater. That's why you'll see the moth on there for the mascot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Break Wills moths. We love them. Oh, let's see. The, okay, so her dorm room, this is her living area. Mm-hmm. Right, do you mind get me, like, a glass of water or something? I'm getting a little thirsty. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll be right back. The kitchen's, you know, kind of on the other side of the house. But I'll, I'll be right back. Give me just a few minutes. And she is, disappears. Okay, so is her dorm, like, very well furnished and cozy? Yeah. Lots of knickknacks, things worth money laying around? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. She's got quite a few knickknacks Anything and stuff I can like just, that. like, swipe in my bag and... Yep, we'll say she's got a silver comb uh, or silver brush, um, a couple pieces of jewelry. All of it, we'll just say all of the stuff that you swipe uh, amounts up to about 400 gold. Is there a diary? Ooh, there is not a diary. As an arcane wizard, her diary is essentially her spell book and she keeps it on her. She did keep a clutch that she left on the counter mm. when she left. I would like to check out her bag. Okay. See what she's carrying. All right. So she's got um, she's got some gold in there. She does have some, you know, identification, her student ID. Uh, yeah, and she's got a uh, key in there, like a vault key. All right. So looking through her bag, I'm looking at her ID. And what is her last name? Her last name is Godi. Fuck. All right. So I'm not going to fuck with her. I will take the vault key, though, and tuck that away. And wait for her to cut back. <laughs> okay. Light up a joint. Look calm as a cucumber. We can cut back to Hessian Francis, and I'll let you mull that over. So Hessian Francis, you guys are all prepped. The place is popping, ready to go, and you are ready to execute plan... Order 66. Order 66. Is there any music at this place? Oh, yeah, there's music pumping right now. I'm asking <laughs> I'm asking who has uh, dancing lights. Just like, which, which of you dick holes? Which of you dick holes are able to do dancing lights? Put down the lights. Turn them off. Put on some dancing lights. Get this place going. Oh, yeah, so, so I mean, it's a school full of magic users. So, every, yeah. I mean, there's That's prestidigitation. I'm trying to get them to win. There's, you know, dancing lights. lights there's, yeah, they, yeah, the whole place is just lighting up. There's fireworks shows. Yeah, there's there's music going all over. Yeah, it's a full-on rave at this point. And they're all drinking champs booze just going to town on it. I'm going to go up onto the stairs. Um, and then uh, as, I'm, as I'm up there, like, flailing about, I'm going to be like, Everybody, pile the tables at the end of the stairs. I'm going to do something awesome. And I'm going to stand up at the top of, of the stairs. Do and something like, awesome. This do is going to be awesome. great. Right. I'm, I'm outside. Can I can I hear that? There's two. Make, well, Seamus make a performance roll and Francis make a listen check or a, you know, perception check. 22. 15. 15? Okay, so yes, yes. You say it loud enough, you project loud en- or Hesh projects loud enough that everyone's like super amped about it. They start stacking stuff up. Ingold. You said it so loud. Yeah, Ingold. <laughs> Hesh slash Ingold. And, and uh, you said it so loud and with such a commanding, excited, enthusiastic voice that Francis heard it while he was outside. Okay, when I hear that I'm going to cast Fairy Fire uh, after, after a few seconds to give him time to start moving some tables. I'm going to cast Fairy Fire at the front wall of the inn, but I'm going to make the flames, like, 
Okay. Something so that they can tell they're not real flames. But yeah. Maybe when there are real flames, they'll think they're not. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. All right. That works. Yep. So you've got the fairy fire going to add to the rave feel that's on yeah. the inside. And I'm going to pull up my rope and tie it around the lamppost and just lean on the lamppost. Very okay. Cool. Um, yeah. No. Nope. Uh, not even a check for, for that. You just do it. It's a, it's a good job. Uh, are they starting to stack? Oh, yeah. They the stacked. Yep. You're awesome. stacked. You're good to go. Um, so I'm going to go down and grab one of the tables or like a, a chair or something that can fit up the stairs. I'm going to put it on its belly. I'm going to try and ride it down and I'm okay with it crashing. Okay. Into it. All right, so do an athletic check. That, that's enough, okay. naturally. Unless you have a negative. Plus one. Three. Yep, you're good. All right, so you do it, and you don't take any damage. Awesome. And when I land into it, uh, the lights are all out except for their dancing lights, right? Yep. 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 So it's kind of like the ambient type of stuff. I'm going to, while in the pile, I'm going to get to my feet. I'm going to go, Woo! And hopefully I'll go woo. Type of deal in response. Um, get to a point cast darkness on one of the tables okay. actually on the on the uh, on the floor be- beneath the table and uh, get out from there pull out the oil flask and chuck it into it and then uh, I can see perfectly fine with double sight yep. through, through all this stuff so um, uh, flint and tinder light it and then um, I go uh this party's lit! <laughs> it's so awesome! The roof! The roof! The roof is on fire! And I'm gonna try and get, like, I'm gonna walk out from the darkness and try and, like, get people, uh, you know, hyped up for that. Yeah. And, like, yeah. chanting as well. Do you want another roll? No, no, no. We'll still okay. run after your, yeah. uh, after your last roll. So I can hear that? Yeah, you can hear that, yeah. Um, when I hear that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my rope and tie it around the door handle, pull it as tight as I can. Okay. Tying the door to the lamppost. All right. Uh, so you tie it to the door handle, and just as you punch it, you turn around, and there are two college kids that were walking toward the door that see you now, Francis, with that tied there. I am going to say, hey, does one of you have a knife? Someone tied this door. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of them goes, oh, no, man, I don't have a knife, but, like, I can get one real quick. I'll be right back. Go get dude. one. I wanted to go to the party, but I can't get in. <laughs> like, whoa, awesome. man! Go that's with him. Not he cool seems he all. seems dumb. You should go with him. <laughs> all right. So the Make one sure. the one dumb guy does run away. Make a deception roll on the other guy. <laughs> oh, Ooh. a whole bunch, like twenty five ish. It's nat eighteen. So the other guy goes. You know, at at first I felt like he may have been trying to fool us because. You could just take the door, uh, the rope off the door handle, but I tr- I'm going to follow tied. my friend. That's tied really tight. Hey, look, you are... <laughs> they th- used a double knot. An, ex- <laughs> an excellent knot, by the way. What was it, Gordon? I've never seen Gordon's? such a great knot in my life. You know what? Greyhawk bless you, sir. Greyhawk bless hey, you. Your friend seems to be hurrying. Make sure he doesn't trip. Slow him down a little. Oh, okay. <laughs> Archibald, slow down. Use wisdom. <laughs> and, uh... Random guy number two comes chasing after Archibald. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So the place is on fire, and nobody knows it yet. All right. Yep. So it is starting to burn, and we will wrap up with Ada now. So what do we want to do with Ada and Ivana? So she comes back with her drink, and she hands it to you, and she says. She's like, well, if you want to, you can keep that that sweater if you like. If you really like it that much. I was thinking about it when I went away. It fits you really well. I like the color, too. Yeah. I think I'll keep it. That's very nice of you. I appreciate that. It's very cozy. Yeah. I'm going to have to hit up that shop, though, and get me some more of them. Thank you for quenching my thirst, but do you have another kind of thirst? You know, head down to that inn and check out that party that's going on? Oh, yeah. I thought you said the party was a bad idea. No, it's a great idea. <laughs> oh. Why would I say it's a bad idea? You've been smoking too much shit. Let's go, girlfriend. Let's go. Oh, oh, okay. And she grabs her clutch off the counter real quick and starts to follow you out the right. door and head toward the party, which has recently been set up on fire. It's it's lit. It's lit. <laughs> it's lit. All right. So you guys start heading across the the cross yard. Down the house. Um, she sees a guy running past you guys, and she goes, "Oh, hey, Archibald." 
rude. <laughs> and the Archibald goes running past, and then uh, the guy, other guy follows him, you know, by. And you guys start making your way over to where Francis the Lion is. Don't I know you? You're Francis the Lion, right? I'm... <laughs> I'm not in front of witnesses. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow, you look just like him. Uh, what's going on with the door here? Can can we get in? Oh, someone tied it. I just sent two guys to get the uh, the uh, the t- the tools. So it's, it's an excellent knot. I wouldn't mess with it. it might just get worse. <laughs> <laughs> it might just get worse. <laughs> they're actually they're going to remove the lamp post. You when... can um, retie it when we go back in. Okay. Yeah. So so make a perception roll real quick, uh, Francis. 17. So so Ada telling saying your name is code that this girl's going to die. Oh, right. Yeah, let me uh, get that for you. That's just for security reasons. Um, they're also checking IDs. I hope you brought your ID. Perfect. Let us in. All right. All right. Jeez. So Let's go get our drink on. It takes me a minute. i got to pick at it because it's a really good knot. <laughs> <laughs> I got my knife. I got this. Cut the rope. I have to use it. You can retie it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'll untie the knot and push the door open. Right, yeah, so you untie the knot, push the door open. Uh, Ada, you push Ivana in. Yes, and then we can shut the door. Yeah, All right. I'll, I'll retie it. All right, so you you guys pushed her in. Um, I'll tell you later. I'll fucking tell you later. Ingvald makes his way to the kitchen. Yep. Uh, as he's making his way, he's going to very quickly, with King Mind, make an observation of one of them who are in the kitchen. Yep. There's two people in the kitchen right now. Okay. Yep. One that's grab just, some wings. One that's like I'm hungry. You know, just one of them. It doesn't matter which. Oh, um, get out the back door. Oh, and then, as I close the back door, shape into one of them. Okay. Pull the wagon in front of the door, and then go back to the mule. Okay. Um, I would say. The cart was big enough to block the door, keep people from running out, and there's no meal helping you anymore. Make a strength check to move it on your own. Uh, so six. So so six. So yeah, you start to shove and push, and you cannot move this wagon on your own. But you do know that Francis is out front, just around the corner of the building, or is yeah, it, the other side of the building. Is he within uh, thirty feet? Uh, he's not within thirty feet. No, there's more than thirty feet of building that separ- separates uh, you. But he could hear you audibly. Yeah, I'll go, uh... Francis! Francis in the back, please! Jesus, everyone with my name today. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna run around there, and I'm pretty damn fast. All right, so you run around... Help, 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 help! <laughs> Ada, do you run around with them? Yeah, I was gonna say, if they're running to the back, I heard their plan. Somebody's gotta stay in the front. I'm just gonna stay in the front and make sure Ivana doesn't come out. Yep, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Help, help, help! So, yeah, I'm gonna run around the back and uh, see him... You know, leaning on that wagon with all of his might, and I'm just gonna run up and uh, also push. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Am I pushing Take from the, the back off. and it not working? And then you just lift up those two <laughs> like chassis, the, 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 right? The and then you just like pull it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, those were actually just dug into the ground. Yeah, I just kept pushing <laughs> just, them in. Stop pushing for a second. <laughs> lift them up, and then you you lean on it again, and it knocks me over and all right, right. breaks both my. So we still have the mug, real quick, uh, on the ground, right, uh, Ingvald was here with a Z instead of an S and then I leave the mug there and then I go, alright, uh, let's go and I turn back into Hesh. Alright, and here is a good place to take a break. This concludes this episode of A Fool's Quest. Join us next time for a more fun and daring adventure. Thank you for listening and don't forget to like, subscribe, review, and comment on your favorite platform to listen to A Fool's Quest Villain